Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back. Today's video is the long-awaited advanced guide for Dark Knight in Crystalline Conflict, a job which is both loved and despised. With a simple understanding of this role, you yourself can dominate in Crystalline Conflict. Thank you all for your continued support. Thanks for tuning in, enjoy the video, and I shall see you all in the next one. When it comes to combinations, the Dark Knight has it rather simple. Your starting rotation, Hard Slash, Siphon Strike ending with Soul Eater, with the Soul Eater converting 100% of the damage into HP. It has its moments, and tends to only come into play while waiting on your stronger abilities. Next is the Salted Earth, the single most hated ability in all of PvP, which makes up for a crucial aspect of the Dark Knight's kit. Without access to your Salted Earth, your presence becomes far less threatening. The Salted Earth draws all enemies within a 10 yard radius towards you, and there is a multitude of ways in which you can use this ability. The most common is by combining the ability with Quitius. For large AoE damage and healing, Quitius deals 8000 damage to all around, converting 100% of that damage into healing. With this combo, you will also be throwing Salt and Darkness into the mix. This can be activated before or after the use of Quitus. If you are low on health after using your Salted Earth, you would normally follow up with Quitus first. Running Salt and Darkness right after your Salted Earth, you run the risk of missing timing and potentially being crowd controlled. Your opponents can also use their guard or their purifiers in order to evade. This tends to leave you out in the open, without targets grouped up to use the full potential of Quitus. All of these actions are improved through the use of Plunge, allowing you to dive a selected target. This is a very powerful skill with aggressive teams. Firstly, your selected target has their healing via actions reduced by 20%. Then you and your team have 15 seconds to kill that intended target, should they die within this time frame. As the Dark Knight, your HP and MP will be restored by 20%. A nice little burst technique is to select your target, dive in with Plunge, debuffing your main target, and follow up with the Salted Earth. This time goes straight into your Shadowbringer, followed instantly by Quitus. The Shadowbringer deals 6000 AoE damage at the cost of 20% of your maximum HP. Followed with Quitus, this not only restores the health you just lost, but leads to a combined 14,000 AoE damage, not including the damage from the Salted Earth. The reason you would go for this play is to increase the likelihood your allies will follow up, and should that first main target who is inflicted with less healing dies, you yourself get a health and MP boost, as well as resetting your ability plunge, at which point those who survive have little to nothing left for easy kills. Your Shadowbringer also grants you access to Bloodspiller, together creating a 12,000 burst. If you are below 25% health, however, the Blood Spiller's damage is doubled for a combined 18,000. I tend to use it more on singled out targets to burn them down fast, in a position where I know I won't die and can escape to Elixir back up. You can also spam this combo more frequently under your limit break as you cannot die for 10 seconds. As a newer player, hold back with this ability more. You'll be surprised just how fast this action can work against you. Speaking of limit breaks, the Dark Knight has their Eventide. Upon activation, makes you immortal by draining your HP to 1. Your health pool before activation matters if you're going for a damage play, with the damage ranging anywhere from 6,000 up to 24,000. The higher your HP before activation, the higher the output. The combo I like to use is to once again choose your main target, dive in with Plunge, Salted Earth straight into your Eventide limit break. You can even throw in Purify before you dive, to avoid being crowd controlled. Follow even tied up with Quitus. If you landed Salted Earth on the entire enemy team, this will grant you full health. You can now make the following plays based on your situation, meaning you can freely do the Shadowbringer and Blood Spiller combo. Done right, you have more than enough MP to work with and will have the enemy team on the run. If things turn south, you still then have the MP and the Blackest Knight to escape. The Blackest Knight allows you to shield yourself or an ally. Once this barrier breaks, you get one free cast of the Shadowbringer without any HP cost. And finally, the hardest combo to pull off, as this can require more team coordination and for the enemy team to not shut you down beforehand. You begin with the Shadowbringer to gain access to your Blood Spiller. You then have 10 seconds to make the following play. Select your target, plunge into Blood Spiller. You then follow this with the Salted Earth into Shadowbringer. Follow that with the Salt and Darkness for the heavy effect, into one last Blood Spiller ending with Quitus for that health restore. A riskier play as you burn through HP and Purify and Guard can kill the healing factor of Quitus, 
as the enemy team can break away before you use it in this combo. In matches with high burst damage and especially crowd control on the enemy team, this big rotation becomes impossible at times. How you combo will adapt to both the map choice and the team you are facing. You also need to decide in a situation whether to use your Eden Tide for damage or to stall, and you almost always never want to engage without access to your Salted Earth. Outside of your AoE combos, the Dark Knight doesn't pose much threat. Look to combine your abilities with your allies at any given chance. Before this match even begins, I like to start by checking the team lineups. We have Triple Tank, meaning our damage output is lower, but our utility is higher, plus running free tanks means we can do much better at outlasting the enemy team. We also have a Scholar and a Red Mage, meaning we also have powerful buffs and debuffs, overall a solid comp. The enemy team are also rocking two tanks, but the main difference comes with their free DPS, all of which are huge powerhouses when it comes to burst damage. Out of the five, the one class I would like to focus my attention on is the Black Mage. Their crowd control span would be bad news, with so much incoming damage around me. So right from the very start, my plan is to keep the advantage, by bullying the Black Mage whenever possible. As you saw straight out from the gate, I had the perfect chance to ensnare the entire enemy team. I can do this confidently, as my team have them surrounded. I hug the wall close, using the corner to mess with their line of sights. And with help from this legend of a paladin, his use of guard ensured we won the opening fight. This does result in his death. However, he afforded us a triple kill stagger. So now, I do not want to waste his efforts. Dark Knights can stall out very well. I fight it out on the objective, while playing safe until his return. As the Dark Knight, I find staying close to corners is the best way to play. This way you can pop in and out, abusing line of sights, and the salted earth can still affect those around a corner. Anytime I see that we have the upper hand, I take that chance to fully heal up. How effective a Dark Knight's play will be can be heavily affected by the resources you have available. You will notice I ignore the Gunbreaker on point. This is from my experience. Alone he will be unable to kill my Red Mage, and spotting the Black Mage holding back, the best decision to aid my Red Mage was to in fact run by to take out their Black Mage, and with the Paladin by my side we chased him down. Our Red Mage did an amazing job at holding the objective, who only fell due to the explosive damage of their Dragoon, who went on a cheeky flank. The Black Mage is still my main focus to shut down, but I now know I need to be keeping an eye on this Dragoon, a decision which plays off later on. At this stage of the fight, it is rather neck and neck. Again, I am in no rush. In fact, what I am doing is trying to waste as much time as possible. I am aiming to shorten how long the match has left, without giving up any objective control. And with my full kit and limit break available to me, I held out until my allies made their return. Again, always using this corner to both heal and to track the location of their Dragoon, right after their map special event takes place, limiting players' movement. Their Gunbreaker chose this perfect chance to use his own limit break. I break away to the side, in order to avoid his resulting stun. Right after, I land a huge Salted Earth, just as their Black Mage and Paladin both dived in. A huge mistake in which my team take full advantage of, allowing us now to pick off those who remain one by one. It is around this time I spot the return of their Dragoon. His limit break is ready, and you can see him flanking looking for the right opportunity. I Elixir back up, I need to be ready. As I do so, I continue to track his movements. I attempt to flush him out a few times, however he is too smart to take the bait. He understands they need to give us the objective time in order to regroup. After giving chase briefly, I see him again attempting to flank through mid, at which point I return to the objective. I plan to counter his limit break with my very own. His limit break will deal huge panic, leaving my allies either dead or spamming to heal. So I want to create the same situation on their side. They cannot fight back if they are too busy healing themselves. Again using the corners to my advantage, I wait until their Dragoon makes his move. I use my guard in order to avoid as much damage as possible, in order for my own limit break to deal more damage. The moment he lands, I use Salted Earth right into Eventide. This caught the enemy team completely off guard as their Paladin and Black Mage had more than enough MP to last, but were much too panicked in order to do so. This once again kept us in the perfect stagger, 
in which we as the team can continue to pick off those who remain one by one. This allowed us to reach 99.5% on the objective before they were able to make a substantial counterplay. This counterplay set up the same stagger we were using to our advantage. This allowed them to push onwards for 31% objective time. However, the control we held for so long pushed this game into overtime, meaning they needed to perform better than we have so far. One player must always remain on the objective. It is important now that we do not rush. There is no need to. They must beat 99.5%. We have the time to easily group up, or to even wait out for our limit breaks. We only need to win one team battle, which in the end came down to dividing their attention so much they stepped off the objective, resulting in a well-fought victory. For your strengths to begin, you are almost unrivaled in objective control. Your sorted earth and sustain gives your team the chance to flip any fight. With multiple targets around you, you are capable of some strong self-healing. You also have access to shielding, which can be applied to both yourself and teammates. Your limit break and healing combined make the Dark Knight the best class when it comes to long drawn out stalls. Plunge is your main skill to engage, which doubles as a healing down debuff to your target, making the Dark Knight the ideal engage leader. The Dark Knight is also well known by this stage. This allows you to often draw attention and bait in your opponents. Being a Dark Knight can be met with some of the most focusing you'll ever encounter in PvP. Players know to punish the Dark Knight, as left unattended makes you hard to deal with. You also struggle to fight classes which deal high burst damage, as in order to deal your own burst damage, you have to pay a HP cost. Salted Earth and Quitters are your main means of self-sustain. Without these ready, you become rather squishy. Your sustain also requires you to hit multiple targets in order to be truly effective. In team comps with players spread out, your effectiveness is widely diminished. And last up, we have Crowd Control. Dark Knight is one of these roles that truly struggles under mass crowd control. Being trapped out in the open from free spam and the silence effect of range jumps will prevent you from achieving anything. And there we have it, everything one needs to know for playing the Dark Knight. No need for the class comparison this time around, as the Dark Knight performs fairly well into every job. Play smart before playing for damage. Bait and wait out crowd controls and you will have all the free range you need. It shall be interesting to find out what the Dark Knight shall be like in Dawn Trail. Good luck, happy hunting, and I shall see you all in the next one.